Hello and welcome to Manny Beal and welcome to my the part 35 I think of my deconstruction of Keith Frank is your lecture series on illusionism and we are well very well into lecture 4 with the titles objections to illusionism where he runs through a series of various objections and uh, at this point we have reached the audience objection and um, Without further ado, let's let's jump in and see what he says. And hear what he says. Okay, now so <clears throat> okay now so let's move on to another objection. I've I've called this one the the audience objection. It's 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 another one that comes up quite often. Um, it it goes like this: the realist um, points out that an illusion uh, presupposes an audience who, who witness it. Just want to comment on, he's using the term realist as if there are either illusionists and realists. And I might be wrong on this, but I don't think that he has defined very well what is meant by a realist. It, it, that's a term that has a lot of different connotations, I think, right? I might... It, it's been a while since the early uh, parts of this deconstruction, so, I'm, so I might have you know, glossed over it and, and forgot about uh, definitions and so on. But I'm not sure I like this very strict illusionist versus realist. I, I, I think it's too simple. In, in this realm of metaphysics, there are a lot of other ways to do it, right? I would say if you have to make a dichotomy, it would be materialist versus idealist, right? And since he, do, he, doesn't, he doesn't even mention, uh, as far as I remember, or only very little, the whole thing about idealism, it seems like it's not even on the plate for him, right? So um, I'm not taking these labels like realist and illusionist very seriously, because they, they don't seem to be... Um, this dichotomy seems to be lacking something, right? That, there's something that isn't covered in this. So... I, can, I could say, you could say that if you're not an illusionist, you are one of something else. And all that something else, he's labeling as realist. I just find that to be a, a lacking term because realism is, well, it, it's too broad a term to actually tell me exactly what is meant by it. Okay. Um, and, uh, and are fooled by it. So who's the audience for the illusion of phenomenal consciousness? Uh, who or what introspects experiences and undergoes the illusion that they have phenomenal properties? Isn't, isn't the illusionist in danger of reintroducing something like a, like a, like a Cartesian theater here? Now you can probably guess how the illusionist will respond to this on the basis of uh, Things we've, um, 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 things I've already said. Um, the illusion is going to say that the objection here uh, assumes a Cartesian view of what an illusion is. It assumes that uh, we know the victim of an illusion. Now this points back to that. I'm jumping in here, right? But in order to say illusion, right? Now, he might be using the term illusion in some other way that you normally understand, or that I would normally, I should say, right, understand as illusion. If, usually, where if you take sort of the, uh, the magician uh, approach to, uh, um, to illusion, is, is that it's an illusion that all of a sudden, a, a rabbit appears out of a hat where there seems to be an empty hat before. It's just, you don't, you, I mean, you could sort of, okay, I didn't see how he did it. So I can't say that he smuggled in the rabbit. But my, my logic tells me there must be some way this dude or, or, or girl uh, smuggled in the rabbit without me uh, experiencing it, right? But the lack of experience of how it, it ended up doesn't mean that whatever you experience is an illusion. 
It's just the, the situation with the magician is there seems to be no other, uh, there seems to be no explanation that you can point to. It's just the illusion is that you don't see what is going on. You only see the result that has a connotation of it shouldn't appear, right? But how can you say that that which you have no prior understanding of how is arriving, right? Like the color red. What, what goes on before the experience color red, you do not have access to. And that's what he seems to be unable to get to, right? What, how do you get to whatever comes before red? You can't do the, as, as the materialist apparently seeming seems to do, right? Is that, okay, now I have the experience of red. It fits into my pre, preordained picture of what I should be experiencing. And that picture comes before the experience of red. And that, that way, uh, the, the materialist is putting, putting the cart before the horse here, right? And that way... Um, I'm sorry if there, there was a little uh, hiccup here in the recording. I don't know what the hell is going on. Maybe I should put in my power supply again. Uh, don't know if, if that... Uh, it has started to do this. Uh, uh, it seems my camera is still on, so I had problems yesterday also. I don't know exactly what is going on. Um, I hope this will end up. Otherwise, I'm wasting maybe an hour or so of, of not recording anything. But in order to call something an illusion, you need to have an expectation of what should come before that, right? But how could you say what is coming before Equalia, right? Because whatever you have access to, as I say, has already by at some point arrived through the examination of Qualia, right? That's why I'm saying it's a it's a foundation. Now I'm 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 talking from a different vantage point because of my philosophy, and I I can't you know I can only reflect on my philosophy compared to his. So it's uh, we are talking from different metaphysics here, right? So so that that's a foundational reason why I'm never going to buy this, right? The, he has to wind up his argumentation skills uh, to you know. So to a level I can't even imagine in order for me to even start to take it seriously, right? But the illusion is you have to know what it, how it should be compared to how it is. And if how it is is something different from how it should be, then you could see, say it's an illusion of, of a sort, right? But you do not have access to that other thing. You only have the experience of red, right? And you have Keith Frank is trying to, uh, um, you know, poke at you with these words like seeming and phenomenal and, and creating doubt in you, right? But that's, that's not illusion. That, that doesn't create it. That doesn't uh, make it an illusion, right? An illusion needs to have some reference to something else that it should be rather than what it is. But you can't get to that other should be, right? So therefore, it, it, it's a misnomer to call it illusion. And it, it might uh, yet uh, be another case of, of him indirectly pointing out his lack of understanding of fundamental metaphysics here, right? Uh, the whatever it is that you seem to be seeing isn't really there, but that there's uh, a, a mental appearance of it uh, displayed in the Cartesian theatre, you're, uh, you're, you're acquainted with a with a, a phenomenal image of it, as it were. And of course, that the illusionist uh, rejects that view of uh, illusion. They say that perceptual illusions don't require any inner audience, an, an inner show, and an inner audience to watch the show. Uh, if um, if, um, uh, if you're under the uh, Perceptual illusions. I, I'm, I'm just having a hard time. In the, he lumps terms together now, right? And perception can be an illusion. But then it's not a perception, is it? So 
if if perception can be illusion, you should actually treat treat all perception as illusion, right? Who would who would give you a report that could support you or not support you in your perceptions? Because those reports are based on other perceptions by some other individual who might as well be illusory, right? As soon as you open the door into calling perceptions illusions, you have to treat all perception as illusion. And it doesn't work then, right? Nothing is, is founded in anything. You have actually destroyed your reduction base, right? And maybe that's the point he wants to get. He wants to destroy your ability to say anything so he can get away with anything, right? Bullshit. Uh, if you're hallucinating something, if you're hallucinating a, uh, a, um, a pink rabbit in front of you, that doesn't, be, that doesn't involve a, a phenomenal appearance of a pink rabbit uh, uh, in your mind and, a, and a, some inner uh, observer witnessing that. It, the whole picture is, 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 is rejected by the illusionist. Uh, they all say that perceptual illusion just involves a lot of subpersonal representational and reactive processes, the uh, experiences in the psychological sense. So, uh, holy, uh, your sensory system. Holy fuck, man, right? Oh, man, he's so tangled up in words that he can't find his way out, right? And he thinks he has solved something by, you know, just piling words on top of each other, right? Okay. They involve, I'm not sure what they are, but let's say it's illusions. Involves subpersonal, representational and reactive processes which collectively support personal level perceptual beliefs. I mean, what the hell is does that mean? <laughs> so now he he um, needs to divine, but they might be illusion, right? But I'm not sure what they refer to, right? Then involve. What does that mean? What does definition of involve? What is personal and subpersonal? What are the definition of that? Representational. What is the definition of that? Reactive. What is the definition of that? Processes collective support personal level what are the definitions perceptual beliefs i mean if i perceive elephant it's not a belief right i mean what what the hell is this man right other than a very uh, you know high level word salad this is you know uh, if you're were to give Michelin stars to this kind of word salad, it would be a sort of a two or three star salad, right? But it doesn't say anything. It's just a word salad, in my opinion. And, and, and the, you know, lumping words in that he can sort of, he can control the narrative this way. I, I, that's always what I see when this happens, right? It's a way to control the narrative with words that are so difficult to combine that he he's going to say no yeah, but, but that's because you don't understand exactly what i mean by this oh no no you have misunderstood it oh, oh, oh. so so he can sort of ref, you know create this kind of uh, gray area of understanding that sort of disarm you you could say right using words he's deliberately attempting to confuse you here right I mean, he might just be sort of a tangled up and on his academia, so he thinks this is how you do it, right? But he's been possibly influenced by all the ac academics coming before him who has influenced him in order to be like this, right? But it sounds reasonable to me to say he is like this also, right? So he fits, in, he fits the bill of uh, this kind of uh, ac academic, right? This is not going to crack it, man, right? Who the hell do you think I am? I'm not going to accept a stupid, convoluted sentence like they involve subpersonal representational and reactive processes which collectively support personal level perceptual beliefs. It's, it's ridiculous, man, right? 
Oh! Systems are being stimulated, being activated in the way that they would be by a, a real pink rabbit, and they're producing all the, the appropriate reactions and so on to a real pink rabbit. And that all these subpersonal processes collectively support the personal level belief, the belief that you have, that there's a pink rabbit there. And that's the illusion. There's no. E but whatever you do, you are sort of. You're mixing up the, the screen and the viewer of the screen here, I, th I think, right? It's like you want to say that the qualia is not really interesting, right? But the qualia, to some extent, according to what his, my interpretation of what he says, is a part of that superhighway where things pass through and you're just a passive viewer to this, right? And then you have a phenomenal belief experience of whatever that redness is over there on the superhighway. That's an illusion, but there's redness over there that is not of your judgment, you could say, right? So he's sort of making a, he's splitting the, the, the qualia into two parts and then keeping one and then rejecting the other and saying, this way I'm going to uh, solve the heart problem of consciousness so I can keep on doing my neuroscience and whatever bullshit, right? Um, I'm not buying that. <laughs> I'm not buying it. Because, yes, you could say you have some introspection to stay in his language about the redness, right? I might introspect about the redness over there, the, you know, whatever, right? Uh, on my lamp, there's something that is red. I might introspect about the redness, but that is not, has nothing to do with the redness. There's not redness to my introspection, right? The redness is over there. Not by my accord, but my but it's a part of the experience, right? It's just there. It's, there's no there's no judgment of whether or not it should be there or shouldn't be there or is an illusion, not an illusion or whatever. It's just there, right? And whatever introspection I come up with, more or less, you know, by my by my own decision has nothing to do whether or not I should be having the experience, right? So you can't get underneath the experience in any way, at, at, at certainly not by juggling round descriptions of your, your awareness of the experience, right? The awareness of the experience is disconnected from any explanation of how and why the experience is there. Okay, I, can, I, I don't think I can get it any closer. In a audience w watching this, th there's, just, there's just a lot of subpersonal representational reactive processes and you having the perceptual belief that there's a, there's a pink rabbit there. And the illusionist will say that introspective illusions are similar. If I have the, uh, if I if I'm under the illusion of of being uh, uh, acquainted with a directly acquainted with a, uh, a m mental quality of reddishness, a, a red quality, um, it doesn't mean that a that doesn't involve a a phenomenal appearance of that phenomenal quality being presented in a second Cartesian theater uh, where it's witnessed by uh, uh, some audience. It doesn't involve anything like that. It involves these uh, higher order experiences. We talked about these introspective experiences where, um, uh, which involves sensitivity to one's own uh, first order experiences, which involve uh, constructing representations and models of uh, one's first order experiences and uh, generating reactions um, uh, to those uh, first order experiences. And all of this, of course, is, is at a subpersonal level. It's uh, these, these are these representations and the reactions and the control processes. These are, these are all uh, things that are, that are uh, properly attributed to brain systems. It's the brain systems that construct and use these representations, not you yourself. But all this subpersonal activity supports uh, personal level attitudes, uh, supports the uh, sensitivities and... What the hell is he talking about, man? What, what, what is this? I mean... 
I'm completely lost, man. It seems like it's uh, it should be fairly easy to, if you if you had if you had condensed this into some a, a, a one slide that d describes it maybe in a, in a drawing or something that, and then you could always go back to when somebody had an objection. Yeah, well, let me point out the objection is this. Uh, this part of the drawing, but because of my argument, this follows from this, and therefore the objection is in invalid. Something that is sort of tangible. But these word, word jocklings, right? They're ne never going to convince me of anything. And I, I, I encourage people to be very careful with these kind of word juggling, right? Because it, it, it ends up in a battle of semantics at some point. I so said, what do you mean by this, right? I, I they get no definitions. They, they, they are not... They're not treated as if they're important words. It's just it just bring in, brings in new words, it seems, right? In order to juggle some other word salad, right? So it's like, uh, it's just a big pile of words. And I'm, I'm no way near, I'm, 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 if anything, I'm just more confused about what the hell he's talking about, right? And that is a red flag to me. So uh, uh, that alone is going to uh, lead me to say, well, I'm, I'm not trusting any of this, right? And with anybody who says, yeah, I'm yeah, an illusionist, and go check out uh, Keith Frankish. Well, okay, I'm going to say, well, bye-bye, right? It's like, um, who the hell can get anything functional out of this that would actually improve their everyday in, in, in any kind of way, right? The only thing I can get to is that you, you are more in doubt about what the hell is going on, right? And he seems to think that you, your world is solidified somehow. I don't understand this. Because if you're doubting your qualia. And it, that's also that double whammy. Like, no, no, that there is qualia. But it's your, it's your introspection about the qualia that is illusory. But the qualia is there. Is, I mean, oh, man, right? <laughs> so, I mean, it's, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm lost. In, in, in dichotomies and words and, uh, and lack of definitions and so on, it's just a pile of nothing or everything, maybe, this, right? It's dysfunctional, in my opinion. It is dysfunctional philosophy, this. Be careful, right? I'm not saying... I, I can't refute it because I can't deconstruct to a level where I feel confident that I, I've got to the core of what he's trying to say, right? And that worries me that I'm not able to, after, and also it being so so bloated and long-winded, this, that I lose connection with what I discussed, what was discussed, you know, three hours ago in it, right? And in my deconstruction number 12 or something like, which is 20, more than 20 deconstructions ago, right? 20 parts of my deconstruction. So it's like, everything is stretched so thin that you can't overview it, right? You can't have an overview of what's going on. That's dysfunctional philosophy, in my opinion. And this is just one part of philosophy, one small part of what it means to deal with uh, metaphysics, right? Just imagine if he was to make a lecture on all philosophy. You could possibly do, right? How long would that be? I mean, it's like... I've made a, uh, a sort of... A deep dive in, in metaphysics called the metaphysics uh, 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 idealism without woo woo. You can check that out on my channel. And I also get into uh, presenting what that means for for um, uh, epistemology and, or knowledge and ethics, right? Morality, right? And sort of show, okay, this means this and objectivity and so on. And this follows from this and this is my definition of this. I do it in sort of 45 minutes or so, right? My metaphysics and my epistemology, my objectivity, my ethics, and sort of the metaphysics take may, maybe 30 minutes and the rest takes maybe 15 minutes, something like that, right? So you have an overview of what I'm talking about. And then I might be able to add, you know, more particular stuff to that later. But at least you, you know where I'm coming from, right? Does anyone know where the hell this guy's coming from other than he's talking about Qualia being some kind of illusion of some kind, right? After 10 hours, I and mean, this is sort of, what is it, four or five hours into it, right? I am I'm not enlightened. 
in any way. I'm but just more confused, right? Okay. Dispositions that constitute personal level uh, attitudes. In this case, the personal level uh, introspective beliefs. The belief that you're acquainted with uh, a quality of, of, of red. So on this view, there, there need be no audience for the illusion smaller than the, than the person as a whole. Um, uh, inside my, my brain, there are all, all kinds of informational and reactive processes that collectively constitute the state that we describe as my having the introspective belief that I've got this. This objection seems to me like an appeal to authority that there has to be somebody looking telling me this is an illusion or something like that i don't i'm not sure right i don't exactly understand this thing and, and it seems to be just bringing out the same argument that he's used to refute all the other objections with right so it seems just to be a a, a repurposing of the same argument argument for illusionism against any objection here right just with some different wording or some sort of the same thing. Uh, uh, in a world of, it's rich in a world of, of mental qualities. Uh, so the audience is just, insofar as there is an audience, it's just me, I'm the person who's who's fooled because I have all these uh, beliefs about. Doesn't he mean then there need to be no audience for the illusion larger than the person as a whole? Why would he say smaller? How, how could you be half a person or something like that? He, he must mean there need not be audience for the illusion s larger than the person as a whole. So it's on individual level, right? So if, he are have, if he's having illusory introspection, how can he, from those illusory introspections and philosophies, how can he judge whether or not I am having an illusion? Because his... He's using his illusory introspection in order to tell me that I am having illusions, right? Doesn't that seem like a paradox? I'm not, uh, I'm, as, as soon as the, the, just the slightest hint of something that is either, you know, begging the question or contradictions or then uh, I'm just like, okay, I don't buy it, right? It has to be fucking sharp as a kitchen knife, right? I'm, I'm not buying any of this bullshit, right? About my um, about my my own mind, all these introspective beliefs uh, that are not accurate. Okay, uh, I, I mentioned that before we close on. There's a couple more objections. Um, we'll be returning to both of these later, so I, I won't say too much here. Uh, here's one. Let's see uh, <laughs> the ethical objection. You're using ethics to refute metaphysics or, or, or aspects of metaphysics. I mean, can you believe it, man, right? The ethical objection? <sighs> How should I put this, right? I'm not going to... Unless you have some very good solid argumentations for it. I'm not going to steer away from the idea that you need to do a complete metaphysics before you start an epistemology, right? And before you have done complete epistemology, you cannot start on ethics. And I would say between epistemology and ethics, you need to settle objectivity, right? You can't get to objectivity by your own accord you need to be in some kind of agreement about objectivity. When you settle that, you need to do fucking ethics before you... I mean, you could say, if he says it's an ethical objection, then he is saying that there's something in the philosophy I call ethics that argues against metaphysics, but that doesn't work. You're, you're, you're heading back, you're using something that you can only start to do when you have settled metaphysics, right? Which is ethics. 
and epistemology also you need to do in order to talk about ethics, in my opinion, at least, right? So he's sort of taking something, he is appealing to something that implicitly necessitates you have already done metaphysics and bring that in in order to argue for and against the metaphysics. That doesn't work. That's again this circular thing, right? It's just, it, it just tells me how fucking confused these people are. It's sort of, they, they are so tangled up in these abstractions and words and terms and, and the history of philosophy and all these kinds of, uh, they are so fucking confused, they can't evil, they can't evil, even, <laughs> they can't evil, they can't even keep the basic structure of what follows from one philosophy to another, right? Oh, let's hear what it is, this ethical objection. Uh, which, I've called, which I've called the ethical objection. Um, this goes like this. The realist says, our ethical attitudes assume the existence of phenomenal consciousness. The thought is that the reason we care about other people, about their welfare, is because they have phenomenally conscious states, because we, it's, we, we believe it's like something to be them. Um, and we thought it wasn't something like, uh, like something to be them. Yes, this is uh, connecting the dots, right? This is um, agenda-driven. Yeah, but we need it. We need it to be so. So I will argue, just because we need it in order to do ethics, then we need metaphysics to be this way. Be fucking careful with this kind of argumentation, right? It's sort of connecting the dots in order to get to the conclusions you need, right? No, that's not how you do philosophy. You just... You set aside ethics, you set aside ob objectivity, you set aside knowledge and truth and all this. You don't use that at all when you're doing metaphysics, right? You, you only do that when you need to do it. When you have settled, for instance, metaphysics, when you settle metaphysics and you start to do epistemology, then you can start to define what you mean by knowing and being true and so on, right? And I would even say that true is something that, that is within objectivity. That's, this, that's um, the philosophy of objectivity, in my opinion, right? But, you know, knowledge and objectivity are usually put in the same category called epistemology, right? But I, I think I would like to keep them apart because they, they seem to be... You need to settled knowledge before you can start to talk about objectivity and that's that's why i like to keep them separate because so you don't mix them up and think you are using objectivity to get to knowledge and something like that right i like things to be strict if there's some boundary there's something you need to settle before you can do the next thing then you're not doing the next thing before you have done that settling of the first thing right and this oh but we, we we have attitudes that assume the existence of phenomenal consciousness, and then we need it, right? This is just also ethical worries. That's that's just bullshit argument, right? I, I would refute that just like he does here, and I'm, I'm sort of curious how he does it. But he should say, well, it doesn't matter what whatever ethical worries you might have, that has no bearing on metaphysics, right? Then they didn't have this uh, inner world of phenomenal qualities then we wouldn't care about them. If we thought they were just pieces of machinery, uh, like a complex robot, uh, we wouldn't care about them. We don't think that it's, we think it's, and uh, similarly for other creatures, I mean, we think it's, it's wrong to kick a dog. We don't think it's wrong to kick a robot dog. And the reason, according to the realist, is because we think that the, 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 the dog has a, has, is phenomenally conscious. It feels like something when you kick it. It doesn't feel like, it, it feel like something uh, for the robot uh, when you kick it. And that's that's why it's, it's okay to do one and not to do the other. But if illu so if illusionism is true and people don't have uh, 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 this private world of phenomenal consciousness, then we've no reason to care for their welfare, um, for other people's welfare. Point deep for our own, I suppose. Uh, now, as I said, we'll return to this and discuss this at more length in... in um, in, in lecture six, but I'll, I'll... Well, if your philosophy ends up in the result that you, you don't have to care for other people's welfare, then that's a result of your philosophy. 
Philosophy shouldn't be influenced by what you like and what you don't like. Right? Be, be very... And it's very prevalent in philosophy, right? As soon as people are, oh, oh, this conclusion might lead to the, 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 this kind of thinking might lead to the conclusion that there is no God, for instance, or whatever, something like that. And then they, oh, back off. No, 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 no. I'm not going down that road. I'm taking the other road. And that might end off in me saying, and therefore there's a God, just because mommy likes God. So I like God too. I don't want to worry mommy. Woo. Right? That kind of connecting the dots is sort of what I call agenda-driven philosophy, right? And there's another term for it. You sort of pre, I don't know if it's presuppositional, but, but it's, uh, what's the term? Confirmation bias, maybe, right? That you, you understand what kind of conclusions you might want to get to in metaphysics or epistemology or ethics and so on, right? And then you said, okay, so what starting point is going to make me end up with that result I want. And then you're sort of cherry picking that kind of starting point. Some of you, just like Stephen Mullen, you're creating a book on, on uh, writing a book, book uh, uh, on, on a morality called UPB and ending up saying, well, the non-aggression principle, which is something that was created before I started writing the book. So he's just saying an elaborate way of saying, elaborate way of saying, what the, the principle I'm already working from is working, right? <laughs> I don't buy that, right? Because if you have an idea of where you should end up, that is very likely going to confuse your uh, philosophy so that you end up there, right? It takes a very, very strong will and um, ability to say, I am going to go wherever the philosophy leads me, right? Just like, like when I found out that materialism is fucked, right? And idealism is much closer to good philosophy, right? It, 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 it points out some aspects that, that materialism should be able to explain but can't, which I, idealism points out you can't explain, right? That's better philosophy than having a philosophy that should be able to explain something it can't explain, right? So, so, and, and I might say, well, I don't like the idea of the idea of idealism, right? So I'm just going to pretend that, no, 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 I don't like, to, I don't want to go there. No, no, no. That's where I'm going because that's better philosophy, right? So that's where I'm going. No matter where it leads me. If it leads me that uh, the whole human race should be nuked into oblivion, I don't expect it to end there, right? But if you, you're not putting it on, on the edge, right? then that's where it leads me, right? I mean, there might be, I might be going to double-check my philosophy a bit if, if I end up thinking everybody should be nuked into oblivion, right? It, it doesn't sound right to me, right? But if I'm, you know, I'm just putting it, I'm not saying that that's my conclusion. To, please, please, right? But, you know, I'm just putting on the edge so you get my point, right? That I won't, I refuse myself to be influenced what I like about the philosophy. I have to be strict and platonic about it in other way. Well, platonic might not be. I have to be neutral. If this is where the, the thinking leads me, that's where I'm going. Because I want to have good philosophy. I don't want to have confirmation bias. Right? I don't want to have some kind of preconceived idea that is not based on philosophy and then use philosophy to confirm that which was not based on philosophy, right? Of course not. So that's uh, the, the, this is also a, the ethical worries. That's the stupidest argument, right? I mean, uh, and I'm sort of a little worried that he's bringing it in. It's sort of, if, if you can ridicule your opponent you might lure people into thinking that you're actually having a good argument, but it might just be, you know, the one-eyed king ruling the blind, right? Just indicate briefly, I think, the, the, uh, the approach the illusionist uh, should take here. Um, first, I don't think it's true that our ethical attitudes depend on a particular conception of consciousness. Uh, we can all agree uh, on... It's the 
point I mentioned earlier about the fact that we can all agree how to apply experience concepts. We can all agree when uh, someone's uh, in pain. Um, we know we, we can reliably identify pain experiences in ourselves and, and in our, our other creatures. And we all agree that these experiences, that these states, whatever they are, matter. That, 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 that person we can say is, 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 is currently uh, uh, having a pain experience. And that matters. We should try to reduce the number of people, the, the number of occasions on which people have pain experiences. Oh, oh, so so we are, you know, utilitarian here, right? So just, you know, between the lines, he sort of, uh, okay, it's the trolley problem now, right? We are, you know, taking the switch and killing one instead of five, right? So how do you know that people are in pain, right? If they say they're in pain, you have to give them money. So if you give money to people who are in pain, everybody is all of a sudden in pain and want money, right? Uh, you know, camouflaging those who are actually in pain, right? All the others will say, yes, 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 I'm also in pain. Give me money, give me money, give me attention, give me attention, right? Covering up those who actually need help. Oh, fucking utilitarians, man. And we can all agree on that without taking view on what pain experiences actually involve. Whether they involve acquaintance with mental qualia or whether they involve uh, the complex um, uh, functional states, uh, experiences in the, that, that I described earlier, the uh, experiences in the psychological sense. So I, I don't see that there's that as any immediate threat to our ethical attitudes. Uh, uh, no, but it doesn't. It doesn't support a, a bad argument. Doesn't support your argument, right? If if I say uh, you're you're claiming that whatever you have in your bag is a car, right? And 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 I'm saying no, it's an ostrich. And you look down in, in the back and say, no, it's uh, everybody would agree it's not an ostrich. But that doesn't prove that it's a car, right? So be, be careful with these objections because it's sort of a half-ass indirect proof or what seems to be a proof that is actually just... It's not any kind of proof. It's not any support of anything. It doesn't... In ob an objection is an attempt at finding an error in, in the argumentation. And if you can say, well, it's a bad argument, this, it doesn't prove it, right? As I said with the ostrich, if you have a bag uh, and you're saying, that's a rabbit in there, right? And and then I say, no, it's an ostrich. And then we look and we say, this cannot possibly be a fucking ostrich, right? That doesn't mean it's a rabbit, right? It's that thing that Proving that something isn't a thing doesn't mean that it's actually another thing, right? It's like, it's the old uh, problem with, if it's like, if you can prove that the earth isn't flat, doesn't mean that it's a, f a sphere, right? Okay, enough of that. Provided we can all agree on when people are having uh, different kinds of experiences and which of these experiences are good and which are bad and so on. If we agree on that, we can, we can just proceed uh, as, uh, as before. But even if that weren't true, even if people um, did think that, um, if people do think that, uh, uh, do regard their ethical attitudes as, 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 as um, based on uh, a certain theory of what experience is, the theory that it involves uh, acquaintance with um, with phenomenal properties. Uh, I, and uh, I don't think that, that accepting illusionism would force us to give up our attitudes, our ethical attitudes. Rather, we could revise our beliefs about what grounds those are. Ethics is not an attitude. Ethics is a kind of philosophy. It's not an attitude. Now, this also, you know, uh, points out how, uh, you know, ignorant and how confused he is about what 
ethics is, right, and what it entails and so on, right? People having all kinds of ideas or, or opinions about this, that, and the other is not ethics, right? And it's not morality either. It's, it's not about opinions, right? And, and actually, you could say that, if anything, Keith points out that your personal ideas have no bearing on anything. They're basically illusions. So don't give me your fucking opinion about morality because it's based on illusions, right? So if anything, he should say, shut the fuck up about morality because it's based on your personal introspection and opinions and emotions and whatever. They're just illusions, right? That idiots. We could give up. And if they're not illusions, but where the hell are the illusions then, right? You can't say in this, you know, I have an experience and then I have a feel of the experience and then I have, you know, uh, what it's like to have an experience and it seems like an experience and then I have an opinion and introspection. There's sort of a, 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 a flow of things going on. There can't be, this is okay, this is okay, this is an illusion, and then this is okay, and this is okay. No, as soon as something becomes illusion, whatever follows from that afterwards is based on that illusion, right? So whenever that illusion kicks in, wherever that is, which, is I'm, which I'm confused about, whatever follows from that, right? And if he's splitting uh, qualia into two parts, the actual qualia and the phenomenal qualia, whatever the term is, right? Then whatever is that ph phenomenal qualia and what follows from that of opinions and introspections and ideas and emotions and uh, whatever are all based on illusions, right? And it's actually in one fell swoop, he's removing epistemology and, and ethics and everything. It just goes out the window, right? Basically, come to think of it, right? He's basically saying, yes, you're just... You're just looking at that super highway, and whatever you have is a, an illusory introspection uh, seeming, uh, you know, phenomenal thing, right? And then if it's illusion, you can't use it, right? Otherwise, what the hell are we talking about if you're using that illusion to get to some kind of ethics and, and the knowledge and so on? Hmm. <sighs> believe that those attitudes are justified only if uh, uh, the um, uh, phenomenal realism is true. Um, uh, we could give them a, a bet. We could give our moral attitudes, a, our ethical attitudes, a better basis, a sounder basis. I mean, if illusionism is true, then that way of grounding our ethic, our attitudes is... is we should give... That sounds like a, a breach of the, the Humes's or Gap, right? So just out of nowhere, we should, and also this we, it's not only I should, uh, he's not saying I should, he's saying we should. Who are those we, right? I mean, who are they, those we, right? Should give them, who, who are these other ones? Are they not a part of the we? How they, did they get out of the we so that the other we should give them whatever, right? And giving is an action, right? It's, an, it's a commandment. He's stepping from descriptions of, you know, qualia, which you could possibly say is a description of reality, right? Jumping into do this, right? He is violating Hume's is okay. He's giving no explanation of how he all of a sudden starts to give you something that is not connected with an ought or an ought not, right? Give me a fucking break, man. He's an amateur misguided because they uh we're assuming that we should care for, we, we it, it follows that we should care for people only if a false theory is true okay so we don't want to we don't want to um to um uh uh and, and uh, so if we just i mean if it turns out that our ethical attitudes depend on a certain theory that is false i mean one option is we could say okay we'll we'll, we'll give up the attitudes another is to say well Let's give our ethical attitudes a sounder basis. We don't have to uh, assume this particular theoretical basis for these attitudes, since that one's been shown to be false. Let's give them a better basis. And uh, this has happened um, over and over. I mean, uh, people, 
and many people, um, I guess, would say that our ethical attitudes assume, uh, depend on uh, a belief that there is a God. But, uh, uh, and so a atheism threatens to undermine all our ethical attitudes, but we don't have to, uh, uh, to let that happen. We can say, no, let's ground our, atti our ethical attitudes in a different way, in a way that doesn't assume, uh, that doesn't require the existence of, of, of a supernatural um, uh, uh, being. On, get to the point, man. Um, or take free will. Uh, some people think that our uh, practices of holding people responsible for their actions, of uh, praising and blaming what they do, uh, depend on our possessing, on humans possessing, particularly strong form of free will, so that their actions are not are not uh, completely determined by physical processes. Uh, and they, and uh, people have the power to, to intervene in the to make decisions that, that somehow change the course of the physical processes in the world. Um, now, um, there are good reasons to think that we don't have that form of free will. Ah, uh, and remember, in the previous part, I told you this guy is not going to he's going to be determinist, right? Because that has to go in alignment. He's connecting the dots and says, okay, I'm, I'm materialist. I am a neuroscience. I am, you know, the big, uh, you know, unfolding of the universe, causation and then following from this and following from this, that just uh, rocks bouncing down the hill, right? So I can't influence. I'm just another kind of rock, right? Bouncing left to right, right? One might just wonder why he's telling, he's communicating with, if there's no difference between, now he didn't say he's actually a determinist, but I'm going to jump into it now and, and, and consider him determinist now, right? That, because that would go in, li in line with whatever he has been talking about so far, right? So why is he talking to me then? Why is he talking through YouTube? Why is he not going out talking to the trees or the rocks? and saying they don't have a free will, right? So, my, I might just, uh, 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 maybe it's a little premature. I'll, I'll get back to this argument later. You could infer from that, you could conclude from that, that we should give up praising and blaming people. Uh, but you don't have to. You could equally uh, uh, rethink the basis for our attitudes of praise and blame and find a, a better, sounder basis for these attitudes. That the question here is, do we think these attitudes are good ones, are useful ones? Uh, should we continue uh, uh, to maintain our practices of holding people responsible for what they do? And if we do, and we discover that the, base, the, the theoretical basis we had for those attitudes is actually unsound, then the sensible thing to do is to find another better basis for them. And similarly, uh, for um, our uh, concern for other people's welfare, uh, if it were the case that uh, this concern were grounded in a particular conception of consciousness and that conception of consciousness turned out to be false, it wouldn't follow that we should cease to care about other people's welfare. Um, we might choose instead to find a better basis for our ethical concern. And I think that uh, can, uh, can be done quite, quite satisfactorily, uh, perhaps even better uh, on an illusionist, uh, uh, within a, from an illusionist um, perspective. Huh. Uh, so, as I said, we'll come back to this uh, this question at more length in chapter in uh, lecture six. On final, okay. So, representation objection. Okay. So, let let's uh, stop uh, and and keep that for the next one, right? Um, no, the free will. Uh, so uh, he didn't say it, uh, and I don't know why he he would give a notch towards the idea of free will or not without stating where he comes from in this. I would think that he's some kind of determinist, right? Maybe he's sort of compatib compatibilist and say, yeah, I guess I have to be open about free will. Oh, I can't refute it completely. But, you know, he would possibly be leaning more towards determinism. I think as he's a, you know, he's a Dennett fanboy, I think Dennett would say he's a determinist, right? Okay. I don't buy any determinism, right? I, 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 because a determinism is claiming an access to that realm you do not have access to, right? That's what's going on out there, right? Um, so, 
so it's just you know if he is a determinist why would he talk to me through youtube right why would he just not just go out and talk to the fence or, or, or the tree or the or the lake or something and say you don't have right so it's like um it's this uh, and and something that uh, rightfully Stefan Molyneux has also pointed out. It seems that that, that all uh, determinists are very willed towards telling people that they don't have free will, right? So why do you need to tell somebody who do not have free will that they don't have free will? If you're convinced they don't have free will, why are you hung up on telling them they don't have free will? It's, it's almost like you're telling them that they should reject their free will, right? If, if they can't do something about it and they, they are no different from a rock or a tree falling or whatever, right? Why are you talking to them rather than the clouds or the trees or the lake, right? It's like, it's, it, I know that trees don't talk and don't have languages and so on, but it, it makes no sense to talk to some something that doesn't have free will, telling it doesn't have free will. What what can it do about it? It's going to do whatever it does anyway, right? Because it doesn't have free will to change anything, right? <laughs> so uh, there's a, all usually and uh, sort of something that there's also Stefan Molyneux has rightfully pointed out that there's a lot of. Just look at what people say in their, their philosophy and their, you might find a lot of contradictions, right? Okay, that's as far as I'm going to <laughs> um, be, be uh, you know, nice to Stephen Molyneux. Uh, no, I have no objection. To, uh, let's just quit it here and say, okay, thank you for uh, coming with me this far. And please share, like, and subscribe and consider joining the Discord uh, server below. And... Um, See you in the next one.